Hi, I'm Lieutenant Lonnie Haschel with the Texas Department of Public Safety. I'll be talking about your new Evenflow car seat. Did you know car crashes are a leading cause of death for children ages 1 to 13? Car seats and booster seats provide protection for infants and children during a crash. That's why it's so important to choose the right car seat that fits your child and to use it correctly on every ride. Cook Children's Trauma Injury Prevention Program and I want to be sure your child is as safe as possible. I'll explain some basic tips on how to install and use your new car seat. This does not take the place of a car seat check with a certified child passenger safety technician. Before we begin, read your car seat instruction manual and the portion of your vehicle owner's manual on child restraints. Every car seat and vehicle can be different, so you must read and follow all instructions. Your child's safety depends on it. Have your new car seat and the instruction manual with you during this video so that you can follow along. Congratulations on your new Evenflow Sonus car seat. Car seats are an important step to keep your child safe as they grow into the seatbelt system that's made for adults. This car seat is considered a convertible seat. This means it converts from rear facing to forward facing. In the event of a crash, your child's head, neck, and spinal cord are best kept safe in a rear facing car seat. This is the safest way a child can travel in the vehicle. Before we get started, let's talk about some basics. In Texas, by law, a child must ride in a car seat or booster seat until they are either 8 years old or 4 feet 9 inches. Remember, Texas law is a minimum standard for car seats and boosters, but we want you to go beyond the minimum. Just as your child has growth stages, there are also car seat stages. As parents, we are excited to watch our children grow into their next stage. However, with car seats, a move to a new car seat stage means that they are a little less safe. This is why the American Academy of Pediatrics says a child should stay in their current car seat stage until they meet the highest weight or height allowed by the car seat manufacturer. Let's take a look at your car seat. The instruction manual and the labels on the side of the car seat have some very important information. Your child can use this seat from 5 to 50 pounds and 19 to 50 inches. This means your child can use this seat for a very long time. In the rear facing stage, your child can use the seat from 5 to 40 pounds and 19 to 40 inches. The top of the child's head must be at least one inch below the top of the car seat back. Keep your child in this rear facing stage as long as possible. In the forward facing stage, your child must be at least two years old and 22 pounds and a maximum weight of 50 pounds. They also have to be between 28 and 50 inches. Your seat comes with a registration card. It's important to register the car seat so Evenflow can let you know if there's a recall or a problem. To register this seat, fill out and mail this card. It's already postage paid. You can also complete the registration online if you prefer. After reading your instruction manual, make sure to keep it in a safe place or use the storage located on the side of the seat. Now, let's take a look at your new car seat. You'll notice there are six sets of harness slots. For a rear-facing child, make sure the harness straps are in one of the three lower slots. For a larger child, you may also use the fourth slot for rear-facing. For a forward-facing child, make sure the harness straps are in one of the three upper slots. To check which harness slots are right for your child, have them sit in the seat with their back and bottom against the back of the car seat without slouching. For a rear-facing child, the harness slots should be at or just below your child's shoulders. For a forward-facing child, the harness slots should be at or above your child's shoulders. If you need to move the harness, first loosen it by pressing the harness release button while pulling the harness forward toward you. You can see that on the back of the car seat, there are two opening or slots on the harness straps. The top opening is for an infant or a smaller child and makes it easy to get a snug fit. The bottom opening is for a bigger child. This opening gives more room for your child to fit comfortably as they grow. To change the harness height in the seat, remove one side of the harness from the splitter plate. Pull the strap from the front and pull it through the desired harness slot.
Reattach the harness to the splitter plate and make sure that the harness is not twisted. Repeat these steps for the other side of the harness. Make sure both harness straps are installed completely on the splitter plate as shown. At this point, you can also check the crotch buckle to make sure it is in the right spot. The crotch strap should be in the slot which is closest to your child but not under their bottom. To change the crotch buckle, flip the seat on its side, twist and pull the anchor through the slot located on the bottom of the seat. Then reinsert it into the desired slot which is closest to but not under your child's bottom. For an infant weighing less than 10 pounds, place the anchor in the rear slot, then feed it through the front slot. Make sure the anchor is completely through the front slot and is lying flat against the bottom of the seat. Never do this for a child over 10 pounds. Now you can practice putting your child in the seat and making sure they can sit with their back and bottom against the back of the seat without slouching. Put the harness around each shoulder and then around their legs. Then buckle them in. Place the buckle tongues into the buckle until you hear them click. Pull on the harness straps to make sure the buckle tongues are fastened securely. Buckle the harness clip together and slide the clip to your child's armpit level. To tighten the harness, be sure there's no slack around their thighs. If there is, pull up from the hips to remove the slack. Pull the harness adjuster strap to tighten the harness. It should be snug enough to pass the pinch test. We do the pinch test near the shoulders. If you can pinch any slack from the harness, it's too loose. Tighten and adjust as needed and check again. When you can't pinch any slack from the harness, then you have the harness snug enough. Another thing to remember is to dress your child in light layers. This means no bulky jackets or, or sweaters. Bulky layers make it hard to adjust the harness correctly and leave too much slack in the harness. You can put a jacket or blankets over the harness once you have it snug. When choosing where to install your child's car seat in your vehicle, it's important to choose a location in the back seat away from the front airbags. There are different ways to install a car seat in each vehicle. Always read your vehicle owner's manual to see how your seatbelt system or latch systems work in your vehicle before installing your child's car seat. Today I will show you how to install your car seat using a lap and shoulder belt first in the rear facing position. Then I will show you how to install it in the forward facing mode using a lap and shoulder belt with the top tether. Let's start with installing your car seat rear facing. The car seat is equipped with a recline stand for rear facing and forward facing use. The car seat must be in the recline position for rear facing and in the upright position for forward facing. After adjusting the recline stand, you must make sure the car seat is at the correct recline angle. The recline indicator is an arrow found on the side of the seat and it must be level with the ground. If it's not level, you may use a tightly rolled towel or small pool noodle under the front of the car seat to get the correct angle. You will see this car seat has two belt paths, one for rear facing and one for forward facing. The rear facing belt path is located near the front of the car seat, which will be closest to the vehicle seat back when installed rear facing. Pull the seat pad off the front of the car seat and route the seat belt through the belt path. Make sure the seat belt is in front of the crotch strap and it lies flat without twisting. Reattach the pad after you route the seat belt through. Your seat belt needs to be in the locked or car seat mode. Most seat belts have what is called a switchable retractor. To check if your seat belt has a switchable retractor, slowly pull the seat belt out until there is no more seat belt left. 
let a few inches back into the retractor and try pulling it out again. If the seat belt locks and does not let any slack out, your seat belt has switched into the car seat mode and will lock the seat belt webbing as it goes back into the retractor. If your seat belt does not lock like this, make sure to read your vehicle owner's manual to see how your seat belt locks. All vehicles made since 1996 have a locking feature on their seat belts for car seats. If your vehicle is older than 1996, you may have to use a locking clip. Read your car seat manual and vehicle owner's manual to see how a locking clip is used with your car seat or ask for help from a certified child passenger safety technician in your area. Now remove all the slack from the seat belt by pushing down on the car seat while pulling or feeding the seat belt back into the retractor to remove the extra slack. You may have to do this step several times to get the car seat tight enough. A car seat is tight enough when you cannot move the car seat more than one inch from side to side or front to back from the belt path. Now let's look at how to install this car seat forward facing. Once your child outgrows the car seat for rear facing, you will turn the car seat forward facing. Remember, it's best to keep your child rear facing for as long as possible. Your child must be at least two years old and 22 pounds before you can use this seat forward facing. There are a few things you need to change when moving your child from rear facing to forward facing. The harness straps now need to be at or above the child's shoulders. The recline stand needs to be moved to the upright position. And now you should be using the top tether. The top tether helps decrease how far your child's head comes forward in a crash. Let's start installing the car seat by getting the top tether ready. Disconnect the tether hook from the back of the car seat and loosen the strap by pressing the release button. Place the car seat into the vehicle and put the top tether over the vehicle seat. Check your vehicle's owner manual as top tether anchor locations and tether routes vary. It's very important to know that in pickup trucks, the location of the top tether is very different from your typical family vehicle. Please check your owner's manual to make sure you are routing the top tether correctly. Attach the top tether, but do not tighten it until the very end of the installation. Locate the forward facing belt path and place the lap and shoulder belt through the belt path. Make sure there are no twists in the seat belt and then buckle it in. Switch the seat belt to car seat mode like we did in the rear facing portion and remove all slack from the seat belt. Push down on the car seat while pulling on the seat belt to remove the excess slack. You may have to do this several times to get the car seat tight enough. A car seat is tight enough when you cannot move the car seat more than one inch side to side or from front to back. Now is the time to tighten the top tether. It's always best to use the top tether in a forward facing car seat installation. There are different ways to install a car seat in each vehicle. Always read your vehicle owner's manual to see how your seat belt system or latch systems work in your vehicle before installing your child's car seat. Latch stands for lower anchors and top tethers for children and is another way to install your car seat. If you want to install your car seat with latch, please refer to your vehicle and car seat manual or contact a certified child passenger safety technician to help you. The most important thing to remember is never use the seat belt system and the lower anchors together. When the seat belt system and the lower anchors are used together, they can cause slack in a sudden stop or crash. Here are a few more tips to remember. Your car seat should be used for travel only. Never let your child sleep in the car seat outside of the car. Never place the car seat on tabletops or near edges of countertops. Your child's movements can cause the car seat to slide or fall. Anytime your child is in the car seat, buckle them up just as you do when you put them in the car. Loose or partially used harness straps have been known to cause strangulation. It's important that if the car seat has been in a crash, do not use it. It must be replaced. You are your child's role model, so be sure everyone in the vehicle, including you, is buckled up on every ride. And never leave your child alone in the car, not even for a second. 